now let's go. So right now there seems to be this trend going on where you take a digital camera and you color grade it and edit the footage in a way where it ends up looking like film. Something about this vintage look is a nice change from the usual ultra sharp 4k video look. And today I'm basically going to show you the easiest way to get that film look. By far the easiest way to get that film look is with Dehancer. Dehancer is a film emulation software that allows you to efficiently edit your videos to mimic popular film stocks. This plugin is currently available for DaVinci, Adobe, and Final Cut Pro, but I'll personally be showing you guys on Premiere because it's what I'm most familiar with and most tutorials you find are on DaVinci Resolve. So for all you Adobe users out there, I got you. I'm a boot up Premiere and let's hop right in. So I booted up a new project here in Premiere and I dropped in two clips from a recent golf session with my friends. And what you first wanna do is obviously download Dehancer, go to their website and follow their installation instructions. And once you do, you should eventually be able to go to your effects panel and search up Dehancer and then just drop this on your clip. So for some reason, I got super unlucky and the day I'm filming, my Dehancer subscription has ended so i will need to renew that after i'm done filming so for the sake of this video just try and ignore the watermark in the middle of the screen so now that we look at the effects control we see dehancer is now placed on our clip and we're given a bunch of different tabs here the first tab we're going to want to go to is input so here we're given source source is basically going to be what was the format of the footage you recorded. So for me, I recorded in S-Log3, but if you were to record in Rec. 709, you would obviously select Rec. 709. So because I filmed in S-Log3, we would need to go to choose camera and select the format in which we filmed. So for me, I would gotta scroll down and I would select Sony ZV-E1 S-Log3 s Gamut 3 Cine because that's the camera and format I shot it. Bam. So right off the bat, the image is a lot more pleasing to look at and a lot more usable than what we had before. So here under input, we have a bunch of different sliders, exposure comp, temperature comp, tint, defringe, defringe radius. I would honestly ignore defringe. It doesn't affect the image too much. So I usually ignore it. Exposure comp is pretty straightforward. I think I could brighten up this image a little bit. So let's slide this to the right. Temperature comp also straightforward. Left is cool, right is warm. I'm okay where it's at right now. Tint comp, same thing. Left is green, right is magenta. Maybe slide it a little bit to the left to get a little bit more green in. And that's pretty much the input tab. So let's close that out. Next, let's move to film. So film here gives you a bunch of different film profiles for you to use. You have some Fuji film, some Kodak, and some other ones I'm not too familiar with. So I use the Kodak Vision 3 250D, but I would definitely play around with all the different films if I were you. And then the push pull slider here is a way of altering your film and it gives you different options of what your film could look like. This is something that's gonna vary on each film and vary depending on footage. So play around with it. For me, I'm cool with it sitting around 0.4, but this will be different depending on your footage. So let's close out the film tab. Next we have print. I like jump into print because this heavily impacts how your image is gonna look. So we have different options here. I like Kodak 2383 print film, but I know some people like the Fuji film. And then underneath we have a bunch of different sliders. We have target white, which is when you move it to the left, it warms up the highlights and whites. To the right, it cools it down. So I'm gonna keep it just default exposure. Same thing, pretty standard. I might raise it just a tad image is looking dark again tonal contrast is just contrast color density doesn't affect things too much so i don't play with it and saturation is just saturation i like jumping to the expand tab next 
which allows you to control your blacks and whites. As you can see, the blacks here are very deep, so I'm gonna lift them just a bit. Even minus one is a lot, but minus two is even better. And whites, on the other hand, I don't want a blown out sky and I don't want super dull, so I might just keep it where it's at. The next tab I like to hit is Film Developer. Make sure you enable this. Here, it gives you even more sliders. Contrast boost, again, contrast. Maybe we'll add some just so we know it's there. Gamma correction, doesn't do too much. Very subtle. Color separation, same thing. Doesn't do too much. You will see a slight difference in the sky here. But both gamma correction and color separation really depend on your footage. Sometimes it does a lot, sometimes it doesn't. Color boost on the other hand, probably my favorite slider. Allows you to bring a lot more color back into the footage. So as you can see, the greens are now popping in the trees, some more blue in the sky, and a lot more visually appealing in my opinion. So this is film developer off, and this is it on. Next, let's move on to film compression. Film compression is basically a way of limiting your highlights and whites. So when I enable this, bam. You can see that the sky dims just a little bit. So this is an important tool when maybe your sky is too bright, for example. And you can mess with the impact and stuff. You can see it blows out the sky a little bit more. Same with white points, dragging to the left blows it out a little bit more. But for me, I usually only mess with tonal range here. You can see that when I drive to the right, a lot more details are left in the trees here. When I drag it to the left, it gets more blown out. So I think I'm gonna drag it a little bit to the right here so I get more of that detail back in the trees. So this is it on, this is it off. You can see a big difference. Color density, again, I don't touch it. If you zoom in, you might be able to see a change, but for me, it's not really worth the trouble of using. Next, we jump down here to color head. Color head is where you're gonna make a bunch of big color adjustments. Film tends to have a warm greenish tint, so that's what we're gonna try and achieve. Under the yellow and blue tab here, we're gonna slide it towards the yellow here. I lied, we're gonna enable it first, and then slide it to the left, add a little bit warm yellow tint. Next, under magenta green, Going to slide to green just a little bit, maybe even just one. Sign in red, we're gonna slide to red just a little bit, just a tad. And shadows, we're gonna drag them to the left to cool them down and right to warm them up. So for me, I like them cool, so I'm gonna go to the left. Midtones and highlights, I like them warm, so I'm gonna drag both to the right. And that's it for the color head. So if we turn it off and on, you can see a big difference has been made. Next, we have film grain. Film grain is pretty straightforward. I'm sure you all know what this is. Lower the number here tends to be smaller grain and higher numbers tend to be larger grain. Lower ISO is less grain while higher ISOs have more grain. So for me, I like it very subtle. We're gonna go 65 millimeter ISO 50 which is gonna be large grain, but not that much. So I like it subtle, so we're gonna close that out. Next we have halation, probably one of the most important tabs here to get that film vintage look. So we're gonna enable this. And what this does is it pretty much adds this red aura next to bright areas that are also next to dark areas. So when I go here, lower numbers are gonna have stronger aura well, higher numbers are gonna have less. So for me, I like a good balance, like 16, somewhere in the middle, just so we can see it. We know it's there, but it's not overpowering the whole entire screen like eight millimeter. So 16 is where we're gonna have it. Next, we have Bloom. Bloom, again, another important tab here. We're gonna enable it. It basically adds this soft glow around your highlights, and it pretty much adds this nice dreamy look to your film and eight millimeter is gonna be a strong bloom while higher numbers are gonna be more discreet. So for me, I like it somewhere in the middle, like 35 millimeters. Turn it off, we see, turn it on. A nice dreamy look that's not too overpowering. We have film damage here. I don't use it, some people might. Basically adds like dust and scratches to your screen. 
it's not for me, so I'm not gonna use it. Same with film breath, I don't really use it, so I keep it off. Gate weave, distorts the image. I never use it, but if that's something you want, it's there. Overscan really depends on the kind of video I'm trying to make. What this does is it adds those film boxes that you see everywhere. And you know, it's a good option depending on the project you're trying to make. I'm not going to use it. So I'm gonna keep it off. Next we have vignetting. Vignetting basically adds those dark edges around your film. So I'm not gonna use it. Monitor gives you control of false colors which is a tool to nail your exposure. So if that's something you need, it's here. Output, basically, how much of the enhancer do you want on your image? Zero is nothing, 100 is full impact. Pretty straightforward. LUT generator, this allows you to export your color grade as a LUT. So if you wanna speed up your process and just create a drag and drop LUT, you can do that. And that basically sums up the dehancer and all the tabs in Adobe Premiere. So this is the before look of the footage, SOG3, very bland, very boring. Dehancer on, bam. You got that beautiful glow, some halation, nice color, greenish tint. And there we go. That's what we have. Usually when I'm editing multiple different clips, I'll literally take the answer and just copy and paste it in. And because now you know what each tab does, you can make adjustments to your liking. So for example, let's say I want deeper blacks. I know I'm gonna go to the expand tab here and now adjust the blacks to be deeper. Then with film compression, let's say I want more detail in the lighter parts like the sky, adjust the tonal range. And now I have an image that I am happy with. So again, this one, before, before, after. So I think it's important to preface that Dehancer did not pay me to make this video. What they did was they offered me a subscription to test and make a full honest review. They told me I can say whatever I want. So in full honesty, Dehancer is very expensive, but in my opinion, I do believe it's worth it. From someone who used to spend hours color grading and still not getting that look I was after, it can be pretty frustrating, especially since I've never taken like a color grading class or something like that. Dehancer is perfect for me. It allows me to just drag and drop an effect, click some settings, play with some sliders, and I could fully achieve the look I'm after. So if you're someone like me, Dehancer is an amazing option for you. And on top of that, in addition to this plugin, Dehancer also has Dehancer Online and the app Dehancer for iOS. Both of these softwares allow you to quickly edit photos to look like film. This is an amazing software if you are after that film look in your images and don't want to spend hours in Lightroom or thousands of dollars on a Fujifilm camera. So if you are interested in Dehancer, you can use my code VFXAaron for 10% off at checkout. I will be getting a small cut for any downloads using my code. So I'll really appreciate if that's something you're interested in. And that's all I really have to say. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.